You're Derek Mastelier from Nike. Uh, a good person to talk to here at Sports Tech Tokyo because your job is to go around the globe and find interesting, exciting ventures that Nike can be a part of. That's true. Um, as we spend a lot of time thinking about innovation and trying to, to export, as we like to say, so getting people more active and wherever they happen to be, we want to bring them the newest in technology and innovation just to encourage them to actually pursue their goals. So I feel like that, you know, we, we are in the Fortnite generation now. We are in a world where, you know, I, I'm 32, I grew up playing video games, but it's a different breed, you know, 20 something years later. So uh, I have to imagine this consumes a good amount of your attention. How do you work with a next generation that maybe isn't necessarily going outside and playing outside and thus uh, becoming those lifelong athletes that you have a relationship with sure. if they're sitting inside and saying, I'd rather be on my phone or I'd rather it's be on the computer. Totally a challenge. And, and uh, you know, as we try to tackle movement and getting kids more physically active, we see esports and gaming as a legitimate athletic pursuit. And mm -hmm. so the way that we encourage movement is actually outside of games. So our recent announcement around our League of Legends partnership in China yep. allows us to actually track movement outside of your gaming environment and yeah. reward that in game with skins and emo. And we also have the rights to sell physical and digital product throughout their platform. So we we can't uh, say that it's illegitimate anymore. Obviously, gaming is uh, you know massively popular, and so we want to figure out how to insert ourselves into that in a in a natural way. So to that end, I mean, how big of an element of your strategy do you think things like gamifying or things like AR is are going to have to become in the future to to work with that? Yeah, I think it's it's important. I mean, there's no denying that you know we've got to be in the place where our customers are and meet mm -hmm. them. So I think AR is important. I mean, most most important. I think we're just trying to figure out, you know, solve for issues that affect people daily. And so, mm -hmm. you know, how do we use the, our relationship with Apple to actually, you know, better someone's life? How do yeah. we encourage them to track what they eat, when they sleep, things around mindfulness and, and recovery and nutrition are important to us. And we're just still evolving this platform. We're kind of in this journey about figuring out how to do one-to-one -one personalization mm -hmm. of your athletic pursuit, whatever that might be. An athlete, as I suggested earlier with an asterisk, if you have a body or an athlete, Athlete, sure. we really have a very de democratic approach to, to athleticism and working out, if you will. What's the biggest challenge that comes with that personalization? It's it's data. It's not only how to get it because it's yeah. available widely, but it's how to ingest it and actually yeah. do something meaningful with yeah. it. And so, obviously, with when I mean, we we're talking about machine learning and other other abilities to actually serve up personalized recommendations, it's just a it's just a really really tough thing to do. And yeah. so by that I mean you know, we've just got disparate systems where we've got data on customers that live here. We're obviously selling a ton of product not only through our own stores but also through our wholesale partners. And mm -hmm. so they've got data that they never shared with us. So once you're off the Nike ecosystem, so mm -hmm. you know our apps, our platform, our stores, we don't know anything about you. And so we're trying to figure out how to actually bring that information externally, internally, mm -hmm. and create a much better journey and experience for our customers, serve them where they happen to be. Well, and you know, the next level of that is you get the data in-house, you as a leader have to then sort of cultivate what matters and what doesn't matter and you know yep. tailor that to your strategy. So for you, I guess, when you get this mountain, how do you sift through it? What are you looking for to tell yourself this is significant and this is where we can build off that? Yeah, you know, it's it actually just starts with the, asking the customer what they want and need. So a, a typical journey might be a customer saying, hey, I'm six months out, I'm training for this marathon. Like, w give me some suggestions. Like, what, should, what shoes should I wear? What should I eat? When should I rest and recover? And so, you know, we th we're thinking more about, you know, is there a, a situation where we could open up our API and let others actually like share the data that you have externally through companies that might be tracking uh, sleep, nutrition, mindfulness, recovery, and mm -hmm. pull those in and give you an integrated experience where you come to the Nike Run Club app, for instance, and it's not just about audio guided runs and tracking yeah. your, your run and your course and your time, but it's about like, you know, the ideal state would be, you know, maybe today you should take a rest day or you should swim or you, know, you should actually like, I don't know, see your doctor because it's, it feels like through other partnerships, you know, maybe you've got some, you know, intolerance to something you might be eating. And so we're thinking about trying to just wrap that experience in external data, but bring it internal. What's the ceiling of this? How high do you think that can go? You know, everyone talks about one-to-one -one personalization, right? Our life is trying to deliver what you need, when you want it, where you want it. And so I think it's a limitless pursuit, but it's uh, it's hard, man. I, I would say yeah. that you know, just the sheer fact that there's just a, 
data that just spins out there. Yeah. And we, it's only as good as what you do with it. And so we're, uh, we're working hard to figure that out, but it's not without a lot of pain. <laughs> uh, what's, what's the next frontier, right? You know this is what you want to be doing. It's something to get there. What's kind of the, the next broader idea where you're thinking this is where we should go, but we're not even close to being at the point where we can even approach that yet with the technology, the data that's here. Yeah, um, it's interesting. I'm mean, going to keep kind of saying this, I think, around the my mantra of one-to-one of -one personalization, okay. but it, it really is just trying to think about, you know, best-in-class services that, you know, Nike can't be everything to everyone. So we know that there are third-party partnerships, which I run for us. So anything yeah. that's non-Nike related, we're trying to go out and work with Headspace, for instance, and give you meditation content that that actually improves your life. Mm -hmm. And so there are partners like that that we want to bring to our platform to just enable people to be the best that they can be. So that's that's our pursuit. You've been a lot of places, you've done a lot of stuff on the league side. What made you want to go here, focus yeah. your efforts here? Yeah, I spent, uh, I worked for Amazon for the last four years or so, and prior to that I spent 15 years in professional sports running revenue mm -hmm. streams for NBA teams, NHL, uh, MLS, and, yeah. and also the, uh, the Seattle Seahawks. And so I came to Nike because a few things. I believe in our mission. I believe yeah. in making people more active, making sport a daily habit, and trying to get people more, moving more. And yeah. so I combine that with my love of the brand and my history with the brand. And now when I'm running strategic alliances for us, I just see it as a, a, a on road to you know, getting people more active with Nike, with our services, with our products, and yeah. essentially falling in love with sport again. And you and I know that the challenge is to keep people moving and active. And yeah. you know, we face an epidemic globally around obesity, and you know, Nike is trying to counter that through movement. And it's not about being that top one percent, a sponsored athlete. Like when you think about yeah. the everyday athlete and sponsoring everyone yeah. who wants to be a part of our mission. How do you communicate that? I mean, I feel like you know, there's still probably the average person out there that sees Nike and thinks, you know. Well, look who's on my television screen every night wearing Nike, as yeah. opposed to letting them know, no, this can be for you, and this should be for you, because everybody needs to be out there doing something. Yeah, exactly. And so it really is. I mean, it sounds kind of cliche, but the sponsorship of the everyday athlete, it's our, our mission. And so we realize that you know people might aspire to be you know some of our top echelon of athletes, but most of our customers are not, right? I well, mean, how do you just... message to them, though, to let them understand that this is an okay thing to be, that this is valuable to yeah. you guys as yeah. a company and should be valuable to everyone. How do you communicate that yeah. to them? Yeah, and so we really just do it through our digital channels. And so not only social channels, but also through our apps. Mm -hmm. And so when you, if you were to actually engage in an NRC or NTC workout, you can see that there are different levels and that people are active in those apps. There's millions of users and they see it as a way to you know, personalize their experience, to choose the workouts they want to do, the duration yep. they want to do, when and where. And you, know, you and I know that the, there's a challenge in the gym life now and that people are just so busy that they don't necessarily want to go out and spend half hour getting somewhere and a workout right. and half hour getting home. And so yeah. if we can bring that in, you know, in your house or whenever you can fill that gap and do a quick workout, that's what we're trying to do. And so we just message it through our internal resources. And you know, we've got a big platform and a big bullhorn. Like yeah. people see Nike as a leader and innovator in that, you know, that kind of mission to make sport a daily habit.